Hi, my name is Kevin Moore. I'm a product manager on the Dart team. And today with me here is Bob. Hi, I'm Bob Nystrom. I'm a software engineer on the Dart team, working mostly on the language. And we have cool language things to talk about today, right, Bob? So much cool language things to talk about. Null safety. Yeah, I feel like this is all we talk about. It's been um, it's been a long time coming, but we are we are very close to having the whole thing fully shipped and out the door. And I am very eager to have it done. As am I. And this is one of those things that you know you want to do correctly. So we've we've taken our time and we're making sure we're doing a good job on it. So maybe before we get into specifics of how Dart does null safety, can I kind of give the intro to null safety in general and the idea of null safety in languages? Yeah, so the you know the high level goal is with null safety, and this is something that a number of languages are doing now, is um, to avoid null reference exceptions at runtime and instead push those forward into compile time static checking. Um, so that's that's what we're doing. Uh, part of the reason it's taken us so long to do this on Dart is that we are taking that approach and we're pushing it farther than a lot of other languages in that the system we've built is fully sound. So. The guarantee that we give you is if you've fully migrated your code to null safety, not only do you um, will you not statically get any null reference errors at runtime, but because this is a fully sound system, the compiler can take advantage of that fact. So we can use it for optimization purposes. So we will generate smaller code because we don't need to insert null checks. And we'll generate faster code sometimes because we don't have to box values. Um, so we're trying to, you know, we decided that if we're going to do this, we're going to try and get as much mileage out of it as we can, even though it makes it a much more difficult, larger design problem. So you kind of get it, I think of it at three levels, right? So level one is I get the red squiggles I expect in my IDE. So it tells mm -hmm. me if I'm doing something wrong, which is great, right? Just that is great from a kind of a productivity perspective. I can look at an API documentation and know if null is accepted. I don't have to guess. But then mm -hmm. we have level two, which is at runtime, assuming all the code has been migrated, um, the runtimes will make sure that if null does th flow through, that we get errors up front. Like it'll kind of babysit us at compile time. And then yeah. the third level is um, we actually get size and speed improvements potentially. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Yeah, so th the model that we have here here is not that there's not a moralistic tone where null is bad and you should feel bad for using it and we're going to stamp it out. It's more that you know we do feel that null is actually a pretty useful value, right? Like it's nice to be able to represent the absence of a thing that comes into play in a lot of APIs. Um, so we're not trying to eliminate null. What we're trying to do is give you tools so that you can control and understand where null is going to flow into through your program and in places where you've allowed null to flow into it to make sure that you're using it in a safe way. That sounds great. Let's look at some code. I love code. Code is my All right. favorite part. OK, so here's a, an example here. And I'm glad you picked a coffee because, you know, these days, it seems like I drink a lot more of it. So coffee is a great example. And it looks like if you look at the header here, it says, you know, dart pad with null safety. So I guess if you're watching this video in a world before we've actually released this um, to the wild, you'll know that there's a special version of dart pad now. We'll give you details in a bit um, that has null safety enabled. And this, what's crazy is, you know, this doesn't look like special dart code or null, you know, anything new beyond, you know, um, the existing dart. Like, so this is null safe code. Right. Yeah. So this is exactly what you would write before null safety, um, and it is also uh, what you would write after null safety. Um, you know, our experience is that you know we've migrated a lot of code at this point. Is about ninety percent of your code just doesn't need any changes. So you know, this is the code you would already have, but now you're getting fully safe static null checking. And by that, what we mean is, um, you know, you can see that in serve coffee, you have a parameter of type string. Without null safety in previous versions of Dart. Um, you would be allowed to pass null to that, and that's not a compile error, but it would fail at runtime when it tried to call the plus method on it. Once you've opted into null safety, that string type annotation does not include null anymore. That means literally only strings. Um, but because you are passing a string to it here, this code is still correct, and it still does what you want it to do, except now you have the static guarantee that that plus method that you're calling on temp is never going to throw an exception. Cool. So let's um, throw a wrench in here, maybe. Maybe I'll just make this a... Um, let's copy this and let's do maybe an optional value because by default in Seattle at least um, the default is usually warm coffee. So I've made my parameter here optional and I'm getting a warning. So what's going on there? Or an right. error? Yeah. So this, this is a good example of where we say you know it's not that we think of null as being bad, 
Optional parameters are a good case where you can see that having the absence of a value is a useful thing for an API to express. Um, but now you're saying something confusing to the compiler, right? So you're saying, I want this parameter to be optional, which means that when you don't pass it, then the value null is going to come in. But you've given it the type string, which doesn't permit null. So the compiler's like, I don't understand what you're trying to say here. So you need to kind of clarify things for me and tell me what you actually want. So I, I mean, the simple thing I'm thinking here is, right, is like, I want hot coffee, right? Mm -hmm. And so that seems to fix things. And honestly, what, what makes me happy here is, you know, I would use named arguments or positional arguments, and then there's paranoid part in the back of my brain, which is like, I probably should still check for null even if I pass the value in, but I don't have to do that anymore, right? Right, yeah, now null will never come in there. Cool, but let's say we, we're not gonna be quite so sophisticated and actually, so I need to actually change the type here and say, oh no, like the string might be null, right? It might not be provided. Yeah, so yeah, so another option if you don't wanna stick in a default value is you can say like, yeah, I actually do want to allow null to flow in here. I wanna say that, null is a valid value for this temp parameter. And then in the body of my code, I'll handle that. Cool, so it looks like that works, but obviously now we have the problem, which is this value might be null and we're getting an error, which is what you'd expect. So you'd see this in your ID as well, um, right. that I can't add null and a string together, which makes lots of sense. Right, so it's, you know, by making something nullable, you were claiming that you will handle it, but clearly here we've not handled it and the compiler's telling you you didn't. So the naive thing I think I could do which is, you know, if this equals null, I guess return hot mm -hmm. coffee. Yep. So dynamically, this is exactly the kind of code you would write before and you would write without any static checking for, for null safety. And um, with the null safety feature, that same code is exactly what you write now and it does what you want. So there's actually some cool stuff going on over the under the hood here, right? So um, we do control flow analysis over local variables and parameters. So what we can see here is the compiler is smart enough to know that if temp is null, then that if statement, the body of that's going to execute, and it will always return, which means you'll never get to the last statement in that serve coffee function unless temp is not null. So then it automatically promotes that parameter to having a non-nullable type, and then it lets you call methods on it on it again because it knows it's statically safe to do that. So if I ever, if I comment out this return statement. Mm -hmm. Boom, right. the error comes back because this might be a null thing and I can't add null in a string. Yeah, now it's saying there is a path, at least one path, where that code can be reached and temp is null. So maybe maybe I'm doing argument checking here and I could do, you know, throw argument error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and anything that, that causes it to be not reachable. But obviously I can't do, you know, return null here because yeah, this is not type return null. type. Mm -hmm. Now, could I even be, I mean, and even to me, you know, I like having code with fewer return statements. I know, I know it's kind of an option, but could I go in here and just do this? Try it. Oh, that's super cool. Mm -hmm. And so that means it's the same thing. So either an early return means I'm not going to get here with a null temp, or if I make sure I assign the variable there, I can do that. Yeah, so we actually do pretty sophisticated control flow analysis and assignment analysis to make sure that um, whenever it's statically, you know, whenever a human would look at this code and be like, I'm pretty sure I can tell that it's not going to be null, hopefully the control flow analysis will be able to come to the same conclusion. Cool. And then um, I'm also remembering there's something else subtly we could do here, right? Which is... Yeah. Yeah, so the code... Yeah, so this is an interesting example. So the code we wrote before is um, if you want to handle null because you know that null is valid and that's a thing that you want to accept. Um, there are cases you run into where you you know that something will not be null, but it's in a way that you can't prove it to the static type system, right? Like there are some times where you have dynamic or domain knowledge about a program that the static type system can't see, and you just need to forcibly assert it. You just say, look, I promise you this won't be null. And the bang operator, that little postfix exclamation mark is um, is one way to do that. So what that means is it basically says, uh, treat you know check that the value is not null. If it is null, throw an exception, right? Um, because this you know because we give you a sound system, we can't just poke a hole in it and let it let the code continue to execute. Um, so there will be a runtime failure if that is null. But if it's not null, it basically casts it to its non-nullable type and then lets you do stuff with it. So that's your sort of explicit opting out of the static checking for null safety and opting into runtime checking because you know better the, dyna the dynamic semantics of your program. Cool, so in this case, the question mark is kind of helps me to find the type, say this is a null string. And the mm -hmm. exclamation point is effectively like, 
I'm asserting here this is not null. Don't give me an error. And yeah. so if I actually went in here, let's you know, let's do if temp equals null. And now I'm not getting an error, I'm getting a warning, which is saying mm -hmm. this is not needed because we've proven it's not null here. And so the assertion's not needed, right? Yeah, we've added some kind of um it's kind of productivity warnings where, you know, we we give you errors if you are trying to do something that could be null, but we also tell you if you have pointless code now, if we've analyzed it and we can tell it can't be null, then there's operations that don't make sense for you to do. And it'll just tell you like, hey, you can delete this. Your code's safe. You don't need to use bang operator. Or um, if you were to do another if temp equals null check there, it will tell you that equals null check is also essentially dead code, right? Sounds good. Okay, so the previous example was all within the body of a function and was working with local variables and parameters. And control flow analysis works really great for that. Um, but when it comes to fields, instance fields, static fields, top level variables, um, even trying to do sophisticated whole program analysis, uh, traditionally doing control flow analysis for that doesn't work very well. It's really hard to tell which methods get called on instances in which order. Um, so here's a really simple example. So you have this class, it has a field, um, it has two methods that initialize this field and then another method that uses it. And the intent of the API is that you will always call either heat or chill before you call serve. And if you do that, everything works fine. Um, but the compiler can't prove that you'll do that. So it's giving you this error. That's what that error is saying. Um, so it's saying you have this field, it hasn't been initialized yet, and it wants to know what to do, what you should, what you want to do with that. So Kevin, what do you want to do with that? So I can th think of three things. We'll start with, I think the most obvious, right? Which is mm -hmm. I can just, you know, set this up in the, in the constructor. Yeah, so that's totally the easiest, safest fix. And when you can do that, this is this is the best way to do it, right? So Dart has these constructor initialization lists. And if you initialize every field there, then that statically guarantees that you can never see that field in an uninitialized state and the compiler is happy with you. Um, but sometimes you don't, when you're creating an instance of a class, you don't have enough data at that point in time to fully initialize it, right? Like assume that we designed this weird API for a reason and we don't know what temp should be until after the coffee class has been instantiated, then what should we do? Well, I could go back to semantics that we kind of have from before null safety in Dart, which is mm -hmm. I can say, oh, like this, you know, could be null, and then I'll assert before I use it that it's not null. Right. Yeah. So this is one solution, right? You can just acknowledge that, like, yes, this field is uninitialized for part of its time, and we'll use null to represent that. So we'll give it a nullable type. And then at the point that we use it, we require that it's not null, so we're going to assert that by using the bang operator. We know that that will fail at runtime if a user calls serve without calling heat and chill, but we're okay with that. Um, and sometimes this is a good solution too, right? Uh, if you have, you know, if there was code in the body of this class that was dynamically checking the temp field to see if it had been initialized and wanted to be able to see that it was null, this is a great solution, right? Because then it gives you a nice way to model that. Um, but in this case, you know. The intent of the, this class is you should never read temp and get null out of it, right? That is not a valid value for this. So giving that field a nullable type kind of sends a confusing signal to anyone else maintaining the class because it looks like null is meaningful, but really you just don't want it to be, and you're just trying to shut up the compiler. Um, so I think Kevin, what we need to do is we, we, we have a new keyword, right? We do. So there's another feature we've added for this. Late. Late. So late is this new modifier that we've added. Um, it's kind of like late in it in Kotlin. It's kind of like lazy in Swift. Um, kind of covers both of their use cases. So, um, so as you can see, the compiler shuts up. It says it's happy with this code now, uh, which is kind of interesting because the field isn't being initialized and it can't statically prove that it's safe. Um, so what late means is one way to think of late is it says um, instead of checking this property statically, check it at runtime. So you're saying, uh, I want this field to have type string, which means it's not nullable. But by um, making it late, you're saying, but enforce that guarantee at runtime. Uh, so what that does is it allows you to initialize it later. That's kind of why we picked the word late. Um, but if you read it and it has not been initialized yet, that will throw a runtime exception. right? So it's almost as if every use of temp in the body of the class gets into a sort of automatic bang operator appended to it, right? So um, this, I could still get a runtime exception here. 
Mm -hmm. So that can fail, right? So the reason we make you write the word late is we want we want you to know that you have to opt into this because it is something that could cause a runtime failure. But I can't, you know, go in here and do temp equals null. Right. So that's this the cool thing the about thing using null. Yeah. late instead of using string question is the compiler knows that you don't want null to be a valid value for this field, right? So it won't let you initialize it with null because you said, no, it's just a string. That's super cool. So maybe we can go through kind of, do you want to summarize the language bits we discussed today? Yeah. So the way the way I look at this, the way on you know we on the language team look at this is adding null safety to the language. At first, you think of it as just, well, we're just adding static checks to the compiler, and it's stricter, and it yells at you more. Um, and that gets you part of the way there. That gets you a language that gives you null safety, but it doesn't necessarily give you a language you can use. right? So we start with that. And then what we did is we um, layered on a couple of extra usability features. right? So we have the bang operator. There's the late modifier. Um, there's the control flow analysis we do and the type promotion based on that, which is a really big part of the usability story. Um, there are a couple of other features, too, that we didn't get into, like required named parameters, um, probably some other stuff that I'm forgetting. Final so late get, is pretty cool. What's that? Final oh, late yeah. or late final. Yeah, so you can apply the late modifier to final fields, and then you get some interesting checking there. Um, we do definite assignment analysis. So the intent here, then, if we do our job right, is we give you the, the safety and the performance of a sound non-nullable type system. But then we also still give you most of the usability that you had before, where you can kind of just write code that works the way you expect it to work in an imperative language. And it you just you know, you just get better static guarantees and performance while you do that. That so, sounds great. Yeah, so that's nice. Uh, the tricky part, though, is that you know Dart is already in the wild, and there's millions and millions of lines of code out there. So that's that's the other real big challenge for us. Right. So it's important for people to know that we're working on a model here where obviously we have lots of Dart code in the wild. So how do you get your code to null safety? So depending on when you're watching this. Um, we might be in a different spot. And so we have a website you can go to to see what the current story is. Um, the first thing we want to let people know is you can run what we call mixed mode code, which is you can have code that has been migrated to full null safety. And then in your own package or packages you depend on or packages, you know, code that depends on your package, they don't have to be migrated yet to null safety. So we do allow mixed mode. Um, there are some trade-offs there. Obviously, you don't get full soundness in that case. So you don't get all the runtime guarantees that you want. And obviously, any kind of speed improvement or size improvement, and we have some really good size and speed improvements already, um, those won't come until everything is fully migrated to null safety. But you can mix and match. And we have tooling that should make it easier, um, both in terms of helping you migrate your code and also just understanding you know, if your dependencies have been migrated, you can look on the package site to see if a package has been migrated. So we try to make that easy. Um, and we'll have more information on tools and packages, um, things on the package site later, as well as obviously we have uh, have a version of DartPad you can use now that has null safety enabled and you can play with. So all the details will be available whenever you're watching this at dart.dev slash null dash safety. That page will have information about the current state of things and how you can enable Dart safety in your code. So for Bob, uh, I'm Kevin. Thanks for watching. Thanks.